All right, so everybody settle down. No more stomping, no more calling, because we want to make sure everybody can hear. So welcome to AA's combat class. This class is going to be a bit more structured than the last, and we hope to go over more information and get more practice in with you all. Before we want to get, before we begin, I want to clarify this is going to be a long class. You are not required to stay for the entire duration of the class. You may come and go as you please. Um, you're permitted to remain unmuted for the purpose of asking questions or bringing up relevant notes. At no point should the staff be forced to interrupt you to get back on track. Excessive interruptions for unrelated reasons will result in being asked to mute yourself. If you have any questions, please wait for the staff members to ask for them. Only interrupt to ask a question if the class is moving along to a different topic and you haven't already had the chance to speak. Keep a notepad on hand to write down any questions you can think of or have them already written and ready in the chat. Do we have any more questions before we begin the initial kind of bit of rule study? How long will this class be? It depends on um, the number of players we have, how many players need to participate, um, a variety of different things really, how long combat will go, because we're going to be doing actual combat practice. Uh, so it could be an hour, could be two hours. I'm just wondering because I need to go to bed in an hour and seven minutes. Yeah. So, like I said, you're, you're not required to be here for the entire time. You can keep um, up to two dinosaurs from this class. Kind of as an attending reward. And you can leave at any point. Let's see. We're going to be going over the following topics in this class, which are the important and or commonly misunderstood rules. For example, C1 tends to trip up a lot of people. Uh, we're also going to be going over carnivore and herbivore group combat, carnivore and herbivore combat tags. So things like um, aggressive, things like territorial, um, things like that. All right, Vert. Uh, general profile tags, which are related to or otherwise involve in combat. Again, for example, territorial. That one tends to bring with it combat. And we're also going to be go going over appropriate challenging methods and behaviors. So how to appropriately in initiate a challenge, how to appropriately accept a challenge, things that will accept challenges that you may not realize. For example, a lot of people don't realize that picking up a meat chunk from a body after you've been challenged is acceptance of that challenge. A lot of people don't realize that. Anyway, so the main rules that we're going to be starting with are going to be, again, our first few combat rules. So like combat one through three, and then I believe I also have another one marked down. We're also going to be going over C18, because I've noticed a bit of that one recently. This is going to be just a brief period where, I'll, where we're sitting and we're looking at the rules. I'm going to explain how some of them work, and then after that we'll get on to the fun stuff. Don't forget to do your tokens, by the way. All right, so C1, survival should be the ultimate goal of your dinosaur. Before entering a confrontation, consider whether your dinosaur would survive the altercation without fatal, or suffering fatal wounds. If you believe the odds are not in your favor, reconsider hunting or fighting. If you sustain fatal wounds, you must end combat. Must is underlined there because it is a requirement. It's not a suggestion. Fatal wounds means your dinosaur, when alone, or the majority, two-thirds rounded down, of your dinosaur's group has dropped below 30% health during an altercation. You should not be on death's door before choosing to concede an engagement. So something important to note here is that um, it says two-thirds rounded down. It doesn't say, it doesn't just say majority, it sp states a specific, um, specific sort of fraction there. So for example, let's see here, if we have a group of five two-thirds of five let's see here that is 3.33 round that down to three that is when your group reaches fatal wounds we do in fact expect you guys to actually do 
at the very least a rapid Google to figure out what your group number is. It is not it is not an even majority. So if you have four people, it's not three, it's 2.67. So round that down to two. Do you get what I mean? Do I have any questions in regards to that? Oh, I see a bunch of shaking heads. I'm going to give it a minute in case somebody's typing. And if I don't see anything, we're going to move on to the next one. But yeah, like I said, you don't have to do the actual mathematics. We don't expect you to pull out a piece of scratch paper and a pen and sit there and do long-form mathematics. Just Google it. Um, Google will tell you, more often than not, accurately what your percentage is, and then you just work off of that. So the next one, C2, the party member group that lands the first hit are the initiators of the altercation. Combat begins when a hit has been landed on a target, a hit has been attempted, or an ability call has been used within five body lengths of a target, or a member or group has been stalking or pursuing another member or group for three minutes or more. So if somebody is, say for example, I'm going to use, let's see here, who's a, who's a chosen target today? Snake Aside. All right, let's say I'm trying to initiate a challenge on Snake Aside. I am roughly within five body lengths right here. So if I bite, that's combat right here. I've got like maybe two at most three body lengths between us. I bite, combat starts because I'm that close to Snake Aside, they can take it as initiation of challenge because I'm that close to them and I'm showing aggression. So if Snake Aside was an herbivore and I bite down and I'm this close to them, that's game. They can charge at me because that is when combat is initiated. I am that close to you. I'm showing signs of aggression. You don't have to wait for me to get up like right up in your grill, you know? And so that's something I, I see a lot of a lot of herbivore groups. They get a little confused on. Um, they say, "Oh, well, he's this close to us. He's biting. Are we allowed to engage?" If he's within five body lengths and he bites or uses tyrant's roar or um, say even a kick or a tail swing, that is still an offensive ability or or um, an ability call. It still counts. You don't have to wait for them to land the first physical bite. Does that make sense? Do we have any questions in regards to that one? Does initiating also include three three threat and calling? Um, yes, we will be going over vocal abilities um, later on. So in the rule, the um, the initiating things, the things which start combat, are a hit has been landed, a hit has been attempted, an ability call has been used, or three minutes worth of stalking slash pursuit. Three calls do not initiate combat. It's not listed in that list there. An ability call is something which affects your stats. So if it gives you a combat boost, an armor boost, a healing even, it's still an ability call. It still counts. Any other questions in regards to that? So let's say a mag uses uses toxic scream. It's not that different from the broadcast, but since it's still an ability call, but it sounds so similar to broadcast, would they take it as broadcast or would they take it as, as an ability call? Um, it would be hard to tell. Um, for you, if you knowingly use the combat call or ability call, excuse me you would be aware that combat on your end has started, and so then you would be um, beholden to the five-minute hunt failure timer, which I'm going to be going over that here in a minute. Um, so it's kind of a um, an honor system in that sense, because the other player can't tell if you're broadcasting or if you're using um, the name of whichever meg ability you just listed. I'm sorry, I don't play meg often. What is it again? Toxic, toxic scream. Toxic Scream. All right. So if you were to use Toxic Scream, it kind of comes down to an honor system that you make sure that you do it, cor you play correctly by the rules. Because that other player may not realize that you've done Toxic Scream. So, so if we do... Go ahead. Sorry. 
If we Go do ahead. toxic, if we do toxic scream, yet the other player doesn't know that we did an ability call, are we required to bite. Oh, um, uh, you are not them? required to bite around them, but you should still be behaving in a, in the sense that says, okay, combat has initiated now. You can even tell them in global that you've used an ability call so that they can uh, react appropriately. Or you can just go into attacking them, but at that point, on your end, combat is initiated, even if they don't realize it on their end. Um, so if you do not get a bite within five minutes after using your toxic screen you have scream you have failed that hunt whether the other group even knows that you, you were ever in combat to begin with i have another question related to the toxic screen then go ahead so since we call encounters begin in combat would broadcasting also begin combat three calls do not start combat well oh. Um, three calls and um, broadcasting are more along the sense of, um, let's see here, kind of like intimidation or an announcement of intent. Like say, if I were to three call at Sav, he doesn't really have to do anything about that, I'm just being aggressive. It's when he returns the three call, there's kind of an agreement of challenge between the two. Do you have any more questions on that front before we move on? Alrighty, so I'm going to move on to C3. Combat only ends when a party member or members alert or friendly call. During a hunt, only the hunters alert or friendly calls will end combat. After a party ends the altercation by alert or friendly call, calling their safety is not guaranteed until they break line of sight of the opposing party. The aggression shown to the losing party after an altercation will vary by profile. So, there's more to that rule, but I'm going to go over this real quick with it because this is important. We've had a bit of confusion from some newer members recently who thought if they friendly call, it ended a hunt on both sides. That is not the case. If you are being hunted or attacked by another party and you friendly call, if it wasn't a challenge, you are not safe. Your friendly call does not save you, um, and they will continue to attack you. And even if you have friendly called, you are still within right to defend yourself from the other party. So say, for example, uh, Pedrone, come hither. You're my chosen target this time. All right, so say Pedrone and I are fighting, right? And I bite him on the nose. We both missed. There we go. All right, I'm the initiator here. Even if he friendly calls, I can continue to pursue him if this were a legal hunt. He's an adult, so it wouldn't be a legal hunt, but like we're not going to be that picky. So say I pursue him, and he friendly calls. If I continue biting him, he can turn around and attack me to try and push me off of him. It's only if I give a friendly call that that's when the hunt ends. The friendly call or a forfeit call. However... He doesn't have to let me go. If the profile says that he will chase me down to death, then I'm not safe until I have escaped his line of sight entirely. Yep. So we could run all over Grand Plains, and as long as he can see me, I'm not safe. Again, this varies by profile. So, if there's a profile that says um, they're not particularly aggressive and they don't really chase things down, after a fight is over, you're just kind of like, alright, alright, you just, you just leave me alone at this point, I'll leave you alone, we're all Gucci. But there are some profiles which are more aggressive, which will harass and drive things out of an area. For example, Ampelo and Giga. If a Giga hunts an Ampelo and fails that hunt, Ampelos do not tolerate Gigas being in the same area as them, and Ampelos will continue to pursue that Giga until they leave the area entirely. So, if I was an Ampelo, and Pedron was a Giga, and he tried hunting me and failed, I could drive him entirely out of Grand Plains. Until the minimap no longer says Grand Plains, I can continue to chase him so long as I can see him. If he leaves line of sight, and I lose sight of him, and all of that at that point, then he's technically safe after the altercation ended. So long as um, 
I wait out the 15 minutes for the, the failed hunt timer and failed combat timer. Once that's over, I can go back to continuing to attempt to drive him from the area. But once we've lost line of sight at that point, the altercation is entirely over. And that's when the 15 minutes kicks in. So, do we have any questions on that front before I move on to the next segment of C3? Uh, I see Snake said asked the question. So, failed hunts aren't required to leave the locale if their prey doesn't drive them out. Um, so, when it's a hunt, yes, you are not required to leave the area. If it is a territory challenge, you've lost the area after, after you forfeit. So, you really shouldn't be there anymore, especially if there is a territory animal which currently owns that territory, and then that territory animal is not you. You know? The Ampelo wouldn't be allowed to actively kill the Giga, right? They technically could, because um, C3, Section 2, after party ends, the altercation by alert or friendly calling, their safety is not guaranteed. So if you fail to leave line of sight, they can still keep, they can still keep whacking you so long as their profile says they can. Your safety is not guaranteed by a friendly or forfeit call. So, if you forfeit call, run three feet and sit down, as long as the herbivore hasn't, like, lost sight of you, they can run over and punt you into oblivion. Because you failed to move a safe distance away. You failed to leave line of sight and fully escape what was attacking you. Because think about it in real-life animal examples. Say, you're a wolf and you have been egregiously wounded by an elk. The elk isn't just going to sit there and watch you sit down three feet in front of him. He's not going to feel comfortable with that. He's not going to want you that close. So he's going to run up on you and either kill you or try to drive you further away. Because you just tried to kill him. He's not going to be comfortable with you being four feet away. So herbivores don't have to let you go if you fail to leave line of sight. Again, this is profile dependent. But... You know, it kind of it kind of carries. You should still be behaving realistically if you forfeit a fight. If you forfeit a fight, you are not fully protected by the rules list. You should still behave in a way that says, I am potentially in danger, I need to hide. I am wounded, I am injured. Those are the same thing. I am injured, I am tired, I am hungry, I need to hide, I need to heal. Sitting four feet away under a tree is not a really realistic way to go about that because you are still exposed. So that's the intent behind that rule. If a pretty healthy Lambio skittish gets a carnivore to death scars and then they 2-4 call, would they, would they be allowed to give them a final smack to end them or do they have to flee regardless? Well, for Lambio, since they are skittish, let's see, let me let me look at the profile real quick before I give you a solid answer here. Just so that way we're good on all fronts. Lambiosaurus, click. Come on, load. My computer's crying. So, Lambios are defensive, not skittish. So as long as you are still within range, yes. So if they are still within range to whack that carnivore, and that carnivore is failing to leave the area, um, Lambio can still punt them. Because Lambios are, excuse me, defensive animals are not forced to flee. Technically, neither are skittish. Um, I'll go over that later more in depth. Would a skittish herbivore be allowed to do that then? Um, it comes down to, again, what the carnivore is doing. If the carnivore has failed to leave the immediate area of the dinosaur, they are allowed to say, get away from me. It'd be that in a realistic manner. So, like, a bite or, you know, a three call, something that says, move away. Alrighty. I'm going to move on to the next segment of C3. The next thing which will end a combat end combat is an unclaimed edible body has dropped. Edible body is defined as a player body. During a hunt or food challenge, edible body also includes spawn corpses that are of equal or greater tier than your target prey. Spawn corpses are considered mid-tier. 
So, for example, you are hunting a mid-tier Paki or um, Lambia or something like that. You come across a spawn buddy. The spawn buddy is of equal tier to your target. Therefore, the spawn buddy takes priority because it gives roughly the same amount of food. Now, if you go over to that spawn buddy and you pick up, and it's got like a 2% chunk left on it. You pick up the meat chunk, eat the meat chunk. The body's now gone. There's nothing stopping you from continuing that other hunt so long as you have, um, you are still hungry enough to do that hunt. So a 2% body is not going to kind of doom you to starvation because you lost, you know, your prey item. All right, let's see. Does anyone have any questions about that before we continue? I see some shaking heads. I want to give it a second in case anybody's typing. Does a burrow also have a tier? No, burrows do not count at all. What if you decide to eat the body because it has more? Um, if you eat enough of the body that you are no longer at legal hunting range, or if there is enough of the body that you don't that you don't need to hunt anymore, then yes, you would you would leave the um, the hunted target alone previously the previously hunted target. Because there is enough food there for you to fill up on. You should at no point leave a body and still be hungry. If there's enough food there to feed yourself, then eat, you know? You decide to eat the body because it has more and your previously hunted target decides to engage. Um, at that point, um, just forfeit. Try to leave line of sight let the other party move on from the food and then return for it. If the other party is kind of just like camping the body, if they're an herbivore, that's illegal. They should not be camping that body. Herbivores are meant to leave bodies. If it is a carnivore, well, they've taken the body, I guess. You can, you can challenge them for it after 15 minutes from your failed hunt timer, but at that point the body might be gone already. Let's see, we got another question about profiles that grieve over the lost member. You still need to move away from the body to allow the other team to eat. Excuse me. Because um, if you think about it, bodies decay, uh, decay rather quickly. So if you spend two minutes on top of a body that just dropped grieving, the other party is sitting there losing... 30 to 50, sometimes 60% of that body to natural decay because they can't get to it. They put in all that effort and now they're only going to get half the amount of food, you know? So leave the body, let the other party get there and eat from it, but grieve from a distance. But you're fine, Sab. Don't worry about it. Alright. So... Any, any more questions before I move on to the final part there? Alright. So, the next thing which ends combat is the initiator suffer, suffer from fatal wounds. Fatal wounds force ends combat. It, it's not really an option. A lot of people... Um, it's gotten a lot better recently. But for a while there, back when AA first had that little bit of population boom, there were a lot of people coming in from other servers who weren't used to having a value for life rule. So they thought that if everybody's on death scars, but the prey is also on death scars, they could try to drop the prey item. That is not the case. Um, AA's C1 rule is, in essence, a value for life rule. So once you have reached Fatal Wounds, you are auto-forfeit. Even if you have not already given a forfeit call, combat is already over for you. So the next one is um, another thing which ends combat is if it has been five minutes since the last bite has landed. 
If a hit has not been landed in the last five minutes, the altercation is forfeited by the party that originally initiated the altercation, and the combat timer applies. This um, little piece here, this piece of this rule, is meant to stop people from dragging hunts out for 30, 40 minutes, an hour, things like that. You should never be spending that long essentially trapping another player in combat with you. Because while we all enjoy playing combat or playing dinosaur game, not everybody has that much time spare. Sometimes you might end up with a player who's, they've only got 20 minutes in the day to play, and then you kind of lock them in combat. Now they're here for 40, 50 minutes. They're getting in trouble maybe with their workplace or they're getting in trouble at school with their parents, things of that nature. So after five minutes, if you haven't landed a bite, the hunt's over. You, you failed the hunt. And at no point should you be loopholing that rule by only landing one bite every five minutes to draw out combat. That is essentially considered a loophole, and we do have a no loopholing rule. If your um, prey item is doing more damage than you can kind of balance out, like if, if it's doing so much damage to you that you're having to heal tech that player in order to kill them, that's a sign that you've picked a bad target. Maybe you should hunt something else. Alrighty. The, we've got two more to do. So which is going to be C4 and then C18. So C4, an aggressive call does not override an alert call or a friendly call. However, an alert call or a friendly call does override an aggressive call. So, if you are in a fight, and you are trying to posture or something, and you accidentally two-call, you forfeit it. You cannot do a three-call to cover that backup. Once that two-call comes out and that other player hears that two-call, that's, that's, that's game right there. It's done. So, the next thing, let me scroll down to it. I've chosen to go over C18 because we actually had to give out... Oh, let's see. How much to call is too much to call? If you stop it before the noise plays, does it count? If the other player does not hear it or see the animation and recognize it as a two call, like say, for example... Let's see, sorry. Like if it's just this little... That little thing there. Let's see if it's long enough that they can kind of recognize it then at that point it's it's too much if you notice them kind of stop and look at you like they've noticed the two call then that's really game there um the most effective thing is to try and bite through it because that is a lot more disruptive kind of does better about stopping the sound however if the if there's enough of it that they can they can tell, then there's kind of really that's game right there. I would also be careful as well, because if they don't act like they've seen the two call and they, they can still report you for it if they recognized it and then you continued attacking. So that is a gamble that you take on your part and you can still get in trouble for that. You can try to cover it up. You can you can try to well when I say cover it up, that kind of makes it sound sus. You can try to cancel it out, but if you fail to cancel it out effectively, it still counts. That that other player should never be going, oh wait, they too called. Is it possible for both parties to agree to continue? I would say yes, if both parties kind of discuss it and they go, okay, yeah, I'm all right with this. But it should never come to a point where it's like organized rule breaking in a sense. Like if it's like a one-off mishap, sure. But it should not be a common thing at all. If it's a common thing where like every other day we're seeing people go, okay, well, you two called, but I'm good if we continue. That's, that's not you're going to end up with people who are in a habit of overlooking their own 
friendly calling mishaps, and it's going to get people in trouble. Staff will act on situations like that, especially if we see them in place and we don't see um, discussions about it taking place in, like, a, say, a reasonable manner. I am dying of dehydration. Yeah, I was gonna say that you you are de dehydrating or whatever. Yeah, we kind of need another body too. There we go. All right. Um, Val, could you drop down another body for us, please? Thank you, thank you. Ooh. Just do set AR health zero. Yeah, yeah, you suck. Thank you, thank you. Alright. I am so strong. You, you scared it, gave it a heart attack. Alright, yeah. C18. We've seen this one cropping up in, um, in a couple reports recently. Uh, there's been a couple warnings given out for it, so I wanted to cover that one in this class today. C18 is, if you sit during combat or a hunt, you cannot rejoin, however your groupmates can, can continue to fight. You must sit a safe distance from the fight, and your safety is not guaranteed until the engagement has ended, or you are out of line of sight. The aggression shown to you will vary by profile. Again, it's the same thing as if you forfeit a hunt, and you sit down four feet away, you're not safe. You are still within reaching distance, you are still fair game. You are allowed to defend yourself if you are attacked, but you may not defend group members. Essentially, if you have forfeited, and you see your friend over there, um, say, Crystal Caverns and Sharky Love, they are two members of a fight. If Crystal Caverns is forfeited and Sharky Loves is on Death Scars and about to be killed, Crystal Caverns can't really interfere with that. It's kind of, at that point, a sucks-to-suck -suck moment, you know? Because Crystal Caverns has forfeited, they are no longer allowed to participate in that engagement. So, C18B, if a member of the initiating group sits, they cannot swap out for another member to take their place. Once engagement begins, no one new on the initiating side can engage after combat has started. So once you've got your hunting party picked, and that's who you go into the fight with, no one else is allowed to join. The person slash group being hunted may not sit at all during active combat unless they have reached a spot that is inaccessible or out of line of sight of the hunter. If the hunter finds and or can reach the target before five minutes has passed without a landed hit, they can continue hunting the target. So, if you are being hunted, you cannot sit unless you are A, out of line of sight, or B, in an unreachable location. If they catch back up to you and you are now in line of sight again, you need to stand up immediately. Do we have any questions on C18? Another Argent body for everybody. All right. Random Argent cardiac arrest. Can a different pack member replace you after you sit down? Um, Ray, that is a direct no. Um, nobody from the un unparticipating side of your group can join in a combat in combat after you have forfeited. So if you go in with four people, and then one of those four leaves the fight, you are now at three people. No one else can join. You have to finish that fight with three people. Would hiding in a bush count as breaking line of sight? Depends on the bush. Um, if it was like a birch woods bush, that's like really thick and you cannot, like you can have like a bright blue dinosaur like mine lay down in the middle of it and completely disappear, then yes. But these little short bushes, like here in GV, like say if I'm gonna go and sit in this, I still stick out. I'm not safe. Even if I lay down, you can still see the blue as you walk past. I'm not safe. Let's see here. I'm going to look at um, 
Woogaloo, they've asked a couple questions, and I kind of skipped over them on accident. Uh, when solitary, you Tyrannus have been known to form temporary bonds with groups of Latin. If there are three or fewer Latins, you Tyrannus individuals may choose to hunt and relax with them for companionship. Uh, does this mean that Latins and solitary UDs can mix pack, like three Latins and a UD versus an Allo? Yes, it does say that you Tyrannus can hunt with and relax with them for companionship. So, a uh, Tyrannus and three Latins can group together. You just uh, can't you can't use the grouping feature in the game. So you can travel together, um, you can socialize, you can kind of behave, like interact, but you can't be in the same physical group together. Can a third party attack another dino? Can, can, it can a third party attack the other dino not in a fight? As long as it fits the legal third partying requirements of it being a carnivore versus an herbivore yes you can but there comes a situation where um if it's two carnivores wanting to hunt the same herd you still need to challenge the other carnivore for it just because you're not going after the same target doesn't mean you're not going after the same group <clears throat> so if you want to hunt the herbivore you need to challenge the other carnivore for it that also counts for the herbivore herd in general but if you're going after the carnivore group, you do not have to initiate any form of challenge. You can just go for it. Um, Latin's profile is going to need to be updated to include a segment about that. It's the same thing with Dinon and Allosaurus. Dinons don't really hunt with Allos, but they still are missing a section relating to their symbiote, symbiote relationship. English, symbiote relationship with Allo. Let's see, Ray. What if a player is on mobile, has bad graphics, so the fauna disappears in the distance? Um, you mean flora? Like bushes and stuff? All good, all good. I was just making sure that I was understanding your question correctly. So if the bush disappears, but like as they get closer, the bush spawns back in, they should still act like the bush was there the entire time. Because bushes don't really despawn in the real world, realistically. So if you see a player sitting down on a hillside, and as you get closer, a bush spawns in over them and you can no longer see that player, you should ignore the fact that you ever saw that player. Because they are hidden, they were always hidden on their screen. You seeing them from a distance through unrendered terrain is technically a form of metagaming, because you would not have known, them other known that they were there otherwise. Yeah, no worries. Um, currently, I am on a, in a similar situation as you, Ray, again, with my little laptop. It literally does not have, like, a proper graphics card. Like, it does not have a dedicated graphics card, so I am looking at everything on potato graphics. There is no grass right now. Yeah, yeah, so in situations like that, when you see another player who should, by all accounts, be completely hidden from you, but you see them exposed because of graphic settings. Consider that a bit of, like, metagame information, and do not act on it. Alright, are there any more combat rules that people are curious about before I move on? This is a rule about the boss line of sight, Sunny. So, if you are... If you have like green skin and you hide in a particularly thin bus, like you just hid there in, in Grand Plains, would it still count as not breaking line of sight even if they couldn't see you unless they looked really, really closely, like poked their head in the bus? Um, I would say yes, it still counts because it, part of your body is still exposed. It's the it's in the same sense as breaking line of sight. You should be completely invisible to every player that tries to look at you as though you were behind a hillside. If any part of you is exposed outside of that bush, then that bush is not safe. It does not cover you, and you should not be sitting in it. Can they push dinos off cliffs if they want to fight near it? Absolutely. Absolutely. That is a viable way to hunt. Make the terrain work for you. Not sure if this was covered already, but when it comes to defending pack mates, is it also a line of sight thing where if your pack mate gets attacked out of line of sight, would you still be able to run to their help? Um, two things are important there. Can you see them? 
and or can you hear them? If you cannot see them, but you can hear them, and you hear them broadcasting or for, for calling, or if you hear the damage sounds, you would know, okay, my friend is getting attacked. Um, if you see, or if you can't see them and you can't hear them, the only way that you know that they're in combat is through voice call or um, through seeing the combat timer popping up on your screen. Animals in real life don't have a voice call that travels for however long. Um, they don't have a combat timer that pops up to that tells them when somebody's... Yeah. It, it is a form of mechanic abuse to... It, it's more akin to metagaming. Because your dinosaur wouldn't have the knowledge of whatever's happening in your Discord call. Nor would they have the knowledge that a combat timer's popped up, somebody just got hit somewhere. And then you open your map and you see that your friend on the other side of the map is dying. Like, you wouldn't know that. Alright, so how do we feel about a Rex grabbing smaller prey and then dropping it to its death? Because Sarko's dropping things off cliffs is illegal though, right? Because I saw a server where it was an issue. Because Sarko's would just grab animal players and toss them off cliffs. Depends on if they could realistically lift that player. A Sarko's mouth is really small. I don't see them being strong enough to actually lift an animal. But, um... If it was like a Rex grabbing something small... Having the terrain work for you in that sense is legal, so long as it is not heavily abused, as along with um, if you can still reach the body afterwards. Afterwards, So, say for example, I don't know how many of you might have seen it, but Verk posted a short recently of my Giga punting his Anno off a cliff. I could still eat the body afterwards, ergo it was a valid way for me to hunt, because I was able to get food with a minimal amount of damage taken. Let's see. Okay, not a question, but imagine if a PT Rex had a throw alongside a Thrash and Slam. That would be devastating, but also really fun to use. Probably not for the person being thrown. Could I, like, a ba grab a baby croc out of the pond as a Rex and kill them on land? If you can realistically grab them through the water, yeah. You shouldn't be trying to drown yourself to grab that player, though. So, like, if you have to go out in the water and expose yourself to potentially larger Sarkos to grab a smaller Sarko, that's probably not the greatest of ideas. Um, you, as a terrestrial, shouldn't be trying to hunt in the water in that sense, because if you happen to kill them in the water, the body's not reachable. That's a form of body denial, and if so, if you put yourself in that situation to cause body denial, you're the one that's going to get in trouble, not the Sarko. <laughs> Alrighty. Do we got any more questions in regards to that? Cut kind of throw. Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna give a few seconds for any last questions, and after that we're gonna go on to the fun side of combat. We're actually gonna get to do things now. Alright, so everybody fill up on your food and water. Val, bestie dearest, do you want to be an herbivore? Or do you want to continue to just be in Spectics? I don't mind swapping to herbivore if needed. Yeah, I can help out. What, All right. what, what do you want? Which herb? We are going to, me and you, we're both going to swap to bars. And then we're going to teach, um, like, hunting methods and stuff. This is going to be a little bit of a repeat of what happened last class. Alright. I'm going to teleport this one away. Put her in... Salt... Flats. I'm just doing a little shop request real quick, and then mm -hmm. on that. No worries, no worries, take your time. Because I can do it solo as well if needed, so... You just join in late if you need to. So what we're going to be doing with the bars that um, Val and I are spawning in is we're going to be showing visual examples of how, of um, say for example, tail riding, meshing, um, how to organize a hunting party. Uh, let's see. What else? We'll, we'll be going over a bunch of things. I should probably 
use the document that I have open next to me. Alright, where is my Bars Bobia? My Bars Boba Tea. There it is. I arrive. Alrighty, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna split you guys up into predetermined hunting parties. So I want you guys to form groups of three with other aloes around you. If there is a spare, we'll stick you in into somebody else's group and we'll have a temporary overpack. All right, so we've got a three here, we got a three there, got a three there. We got a, a mosh pit ball of aloes over here. You guys separate and form groups. We got, okay, so there's a group of three. Ray, go join those two. All right. You guys add Ray in. Add Ray to your group. All right, so. Remember who you are with currently. This is your predetermined hunting party. So if you go into combat, the people next to you are the ones who are going to be fighting with you. All right. Um, Seraph, I want you and your group members to come stand next to this group. You are going to count as a full pack. All right. Same with the other group. You two are going to stand together. Just remember who your predetermined hunting party is. So you two are going, you two groups are going to count as a full pack. All right, and then um, Pedron, Sav, Blue Cryptid, you guys are gonna count with this group over here. Um, we're just gonna not acknowledge the fact that there's nine aloes in one group. All right, so the reason why I'm putting you guys with predetermined hunting parties, but also with large groups is because we're going to be going over how the other half of your group can help in combat without interfering in the combat. So, everybody knows where the 30% mark is, right? Sniffle, would you volunteer to get beat up for a minute? Or Ruga, either one of you, I don't mind. You're gonna get, you're gonna get punched around for a minute. <laughs> Alright. Sniffle has been been chosen. All right, come here. You're gonna get a tail slam. All right, group members. I want you guys to tell me when Sniffle is at thirty percent. All right. All right. This is taking too long. Come here. Mm-hmm. All right. So, what you can do to help Sniffle and your group members identify when they should be forfeiting is the people who are not participating keep an eye on their health and let them know. So say, all right, I'm going to set your health back. There you go. Thank you for getting beat up on behalf of the party. So, Say, for example, somebody with a longer name. If Wuga, for example, if I were to beat up Wuga, 30% would be roughly around the G in their name. That is a little trick you can use to help your party members identify what 30% is for you. So if you know um, where 30% is, but say somebody in combat doesn't know when they should draw out, keep an eye on their health and pull them out. Wouldn't it be easier to moderate it by death scars over percent? 
Yes and no. Because a lot of times, if you are showing death scars and you forfeit, the other party knows that you're so close to death, they might pers they might try to run you down to secure a body down to save themselves. So that's why we don't use death scars. So it would be easier to say, okay, this person's on death scars, they need to pull out. But then again, that puts them in a position of vulnerability, which may guarantee their death at the end of the day when draw pulling out in the first place is meant to avoid it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's different, Ray. It's different for each member and their name. For example, for Faded, it would be around the D in their name. The first D, anyway. Well, closer to the A in Faded. More or less, roughly. And it's not an exact science, but, you know, once you're at that spot, or near that spot, you should be pulling out regardless to be safe on your own end. You know, cover your own backside before anybody else's, you know? If you're in combat and you think, I, I am really close to 30%, don't take that gamble and get yourself in trouble. If you can't tell, pull out early. There is no shame in it. And if anybody tries to shame you for pulling out of combat, don't play with them. That's not fun. Yeah, Nobody wants to get... What... Go ahead. That's what, my... that's what my group does, is if we're not sure, we pull out early. We're like, nope, we're not going to do this. Which is good. You should always do that. I got one question, though. Okay, so let's say you're okay, you're a bars and you have a group of allos and you're seeing like one of your allos friends getting really low and you're about to call the 30 and in order to try and stop potential overhitting from the herbivore side, is it okay if I throw my allo in between to try and stop knowing that my friend is or my pack mate is at the 30% mark because I have noticed that some herbivores get a little too overzealous when we're trying to pull away and I've actually had to force myself in between them and be like it's 30, it's 30, you know we're forfeiting um, so two things in that regards if you were already participating in the fight you can you can body block if the group has already forfeited you can as long as you are making an active attempt to get away from the herbivore but remember, forfeits do not save you. You are you are still, um, you are still you know exposed to danger as long as you are within line of sight of that herbivore. Okay. If by profile they are aggressive or defensive, and you are still too close to them, defensive animals can still attack to drive you further away. Defensive animals can chase you down. Okay. Or, excuse I me, just aggressive. wanted to know. Mm -hmm. Because I've actually had to physically put myself between my pack mate and a herbivore to try and, like, take their attention off of one that's about to die. So I just wanted to make sure that I was in the right, since I was part of the hunting party to begin with. Mm -hmm. The only time someone should not be doing that is if combat is still ongoing, i.e. no one has forfeited, like, for the entire group. And the person who is trying to run interference was not already in the combat party because then that kind of brings confusion as to who all is actively attacking you know the person that you're trying to hunt should never be confused as to who your hunting party is all right who wants to fight a bars me all right we're gonna give this team a little bit of attention because we've kind of been pick on you guys for a minute. So. This team, pick your pick your poison. Who is the group that's attacking first? Out of the out of the six of you, which uh, um, predetermined hunting party is going to attack?
All right, so something to keep in mind when you're about to start a hunt. Have your target already chosen because picking an important target can change the tide of a, of a fight. Like, say for example, look at me and look at Val real quick, your two bars. Which one do you think would be more dangerous? All right, so with in mind, think about Bar's profile. Which individual is going to defend is going to protect the other and which individual will not protect the other? So, in this particular hunt, you have two options. You can you can target a female who may be less experienced with combat but will be defended by the male. Or you can pick the male who will not be defended but is arguably more dangerous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if the female does not have babies and is still in the male's area, he will still defend her. If the female has babies, she's kind of on her own. Because the male would have already left at that point. Luckily, I don't have babies. Yep. So, with the given situation, pick your target. Val and I are going to start walking that way. And when you guys are ready, you can use your um, hunting tags, which are Ambusher and Pursuit, I believe. And you can either try to ambush us, or you can just run us down. You have the option to use either one. So discuss amongst yourselves, pick your target, and then when you're ready, come throw hands. The rest of you guys can follow to watch and observe, but make sure you're not so close that we can't tell who the hunting party is from those who are not participating, okay? Also, keep an eye on the terrain around you. That is also an important part for picking your target. Because the terrain makes all the difference in the world sometimes. I see an aloe. I see another aloe. I don't. Now nah, I'm looking at them behind us. I've got tags turned off, by the way, so I don't know which one is which. <sighs> Yummy berry bush. Gonna eat some of that. Ooh, yeah. Not me completely forgetting that there actually is a bush here. Yeah, this one's a natural spawn, so we're all good. They're like vultures up there. <sighs> Saw a head poke out of a bush.
look, Sphinx. I'm laggy, so it's messing up my usual thing. Why is it not? Okay. We're gonna continue. We're good. we go. You're standing still. Be aware of how close you stand to combat when you're typing, because people can take advantage of that. I don't know how that would hit you. Honestly, I don't know how that would hit you, but... So at this point, based on behavior, I'm theorizing that the, li the lighter colored one over here is a little bit low. Because they've been avoiding interacting with me, so I'm going to focus on this one for a minute.
You're getting awfully close over there. Getting a little excited. Remember not to get too excited because you see death scars. A lot of people ruin their own hunts by rushing in when they see death scars showing up. Which is going to let me get a lot of free hits on you guys. A good thing to keep in mind is to set a timer. If you if you know that you're not going to be able to keep track of it on your own, have a phone next to you with a timer going on it that you can reset every time you hear a bite land. Usually, somebody who's not participating in the fight should be the one to do that. Alrighty, so I am essentially dead, so we're gonna call it here and say that you guys got the body down. I am deceased. You guys did good. So, uh, Wugu says, when it's 301, when it's 306, we go back in or stop. 306 is five minutes since 301, so at that point, if no bites have been landed, that's game, it's over. On that five minute mark, that is when, um, that's when the fight has failed. I did notice you did pretty good with that dragon. So a good thing to keep in mind is a lot of times you'll see um, sometimes people get in trouble for tail riding. The reason that we have that is, um, oh you're good, you're good, don't worry about it. The reason that we have that is a lot of times players' tails are not their most effective weapons. 
And so an effective way of fighting is doing what these three were doing, which is running in, biting, and pulling back out. When you commit to a tail ride, that's when you open yourself up to A, taking a lot of unnecessary damage, and also B, getting potentially in trouble for getting a little overzealous, because we have that limit of four landed bites, or hits otherwise. And a lot of times, players, you may not be aware if all of your um, hits have landed or not. And so, if you're potentially confused as to whether or not you have landed three hits or four hits, don't go in for that fourth hit if you don't know, because you don't want to take that risk if you actually have already landed four hits. <laughs> Excuse me. That's when people get in trouble, is because they get confused, they lose track of counting, and then they go in for that extra hit, thinking that, okay, this is going to be the fourth hit, when really it's the fifth hit, or potentially the sixth hit. That's what gets people in trouble. So, your more effective and also more realistic way... Yes, I will. Your more effective and more realistic way of fighting is to do hit and runs. Run in, bite, pull away. While realistically, animals like Allosaurus would be able to grab onto and grapple with things, the Allosaurus that we have doesn't have that ability. So that leaves you with only tail riding or hit and runs. Yes, yet. They might add it later on. But for right now, we don't have it. So do the best you can with what you've got, and don't put yourself in a position where you might get yourself in trouble. Alright. So, let's... Do you guys want to swap to smaller carnivores and try again with, say, raptors, something that can pounce? Or do we want to move on to um, some other things? I'll go looking over, like, tags and stuff. Alright. Everybody swap to... Let's, let's swap to Dynon. Go ahead and everybody swap to Dynon. Because Latin has a lot of abilities that are night required, and we don't want to do too much messing with the clock. You still need me as a B Dino? I would say, yeah. Let, we're going to let the Dinons pick their target again. Oh. Ooh. Slash bring. Fire, Fluff, Drake, 47, oh, ring. Where is this? All right, so. Don't ask in global more than once because it's making the chat move. You've got. Oh, um, we seem to have a Uteranus here. Oh no, that might have been my fault. All right. I think that was me actually. Can you send them back over to their group, please? They've they're grouped with somebody over there. I need to expect more for that. I don't know who they were with. That was probably the worst timing for someone to ask for a regular teleport. Oh my goodness. Alright. Oh, they said tank. thank you, not teleport. I thought they put TP, not TY. Okay, so... It's Fire Fluff, yeah? Mm-hmm, Fire Fluff Drake 47. Alright, I'm gonna bring you back, Fluff. Just one second.
All right. Is there anybody that needs to teleport that I have not already got? All right. Here. I've got flash. Crystal, do you still need to grow in marks? I think I got you already. There's so many moving chickens. Here's still still little chicken. Okay, I think we're good. We have somebody screaming chickens. All right, guys, settle. Everybody, settle. Alrighty. So, what I want you guys to do: pop to Dynon profile real quick and see what their hunting party is for large, car large targets. You would look either in group limits or down at the bottom at the hunting and feeding section. So this would count as a mob, since you're going after a high tier target. Alright, so, turn the tags back off. Let's see, I'm going to pop up and take a peek at this myself as well. So you can have a regular hunt, or you can have a mob. It depends on um, what your group size is, as well as if there is anybody around you. I'd say no. Let's go ahead and stay with what we have. Because you don't have to have Latins to mob. To mob. So... Alright, so, since Latins are... Let's see, I believe they're Cath. Let me check... Yes, you guys are Cath, so we don't have to wait or we don't have to set the time again. Don't bite the admin, birdie. Rude. Okay. So, you guys are going to, again, pick your target. And we're going to attempt another hunt. So, um, because this was mentioned before... Um, pouncing. Pouncing with raptors currently is not listed in the rules, but it is something that we should keep in mind because um, 
it does essentially the same thing that tail riding does. It's dealing out a lot of damage that the other individual cannot effectively counter. So, limit your bites to the four bites. The tail riding limit. Because pouncing as I, as I just said, is essentially the same sort of thing. Like, you're, the person that you're pouncing cannot effectively hit you back. The only thing that they can do is shake to try and get you off, but that doesn't do any damage back to you. And so that other person is having to rely on you running out of stamina and dismounting in order to effectively hit you. So the fair thing to do as a player would be to bite... Um, the four times, and then dismount. And then repeat the process. So, we're actually going to let Val have some fun this time. Do you want to fight the chickens, Val? Oh god. Alright. It'll be alright, Crystal. That's why we're doing this. This is practice. Alright, so. Pick your ten people. Dynance. Pick your ten people, separate from the group. That is your hunting party. Alright, here. So, those who are not actively participating in the hunt, you guys need to help your group members keep an eye on their health. Dynon takes a lot more damage than an aloe does. So if you see somebody at 30% or lower, tell them to pull out. Let's see here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, I think you guys are good. Alright. So those who are not participating in the hunt, like I said, keep an eye on your on your friend's health. That is your group members. You want to make sure that they don't get in trouble. So if you see them at 30%, pull them out. A good point for 30% is if you look at Pedro's name, because he's closest to the edge, when his health gets to around the D and R, that is 30% in Pedro's name. So once people's health gets to roughly that area, that amount of health, tell them to pull out. Alright? That's you guys' responsibility to help your group members. Alright. Whenever you guys are ready, go ahead and go after our, our lovely black and white cow. Remember, if you pounce, four bites and dismount. Space bar to shake, Val. She is shaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to tell from this angle. There she goes. voice call limit on dynons so bark the only thing it does is it does a brief um imp imp like boost to damage it does not affect your health or stamina so there is no limit to bark calls anything that would give you a health or essentially anything that would regenerate a stat that you wouldn't lose in combat is limited Use your tail swing, Val. Tail swing has a greater range. Uh, I don't have it equipped, so... Oh, goodness. Why don't you have it equipped? If you are not in the hunting party, then no, you would not use any calls to buff those, because that is an advantage that your target doesn't have. They don't have somebody outside of the group. And even if they did, that's, that's still not something that they can counter. So, no, you would not do any sort of assisting to the hunting party. Those ten folks are over there on their own. Oh, 
Somebody tell Rugaru to get out. Rugaru's health is really low. I, I kind of took the fight away from mm -hmm. the Danons, my bad. Yeah. All good, all good. It happens in combat. So, Dinons who aren't participating, come over to the, the bowl real quick. Alright, so, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tip. Woog's health, you see where they are right now? When their health is around the G in their name is when you want to tell them to pull out. So right now they're more close to like 15 to 20% health. You want to pull them out at 30. It's not a rule break at the moment because it's an individual forfeit. It becomes a rule break when um, more than a certain amount of the hunting party is at that point. So you have 10. Real quick, you guys, pull out your phone. Find out what two thirds of 10 rounded down is. Because that's what you guys are here to do. That's how you help your hunting party. Hey, I'm gonna body block. All right, put in global what two thirds of ten rounded down is. You can Google it. Easy, easy Google, real quick. All right, so currently we have one at required forfeit, but they're they're more around half. So, all right, I got you, Luca. You just can't re-engage, okay? All right, stay over here. Um, so flame is low, but they're not quite there yet. When flame gets to around the M E area. More, t more so around the M. When it gets to around the middle of the M, that's when they need to pull out. So that's how you guys help your party members. You keep an eye out, you let them know when to pull out, so that way nobody gets in trouble. If you do some running, you can trample, Val. Trample. Use, use your, you got a fat butt like all, all bars do. So, at this point, I would say it's safe to say Val's probably going to die. Why don't we try on something that's a little bit smaller and a little bit more versatile? You guys want to try to take on an Iggy? Alright. Who's respawning them? Um, Verk is going to swap. He wants to take on the herd. The horde. Oh, okay. Yep. Alright. So at this point, Val, I relieve you from your assistant duties if you want to. Thank um, you. Go ahead and slay your bars if you would, if you're gonna swap. If that's a personal bars, then I can sw I can slay mine. I'm not worried about it. About it. Oh no, it's not. It's not a personal one. No. Okay. <laughs> that works. That was service food for him, so it's all right. I'm, I, it's the interaction one that I've made, so it'll be used for further interactions. Mm -hmm. like that. You guys, uh, thank oh, you, yeah, Val. I appreciate it. it. If you guys want to, you can run into Impact Get Water. Unfortunately, we can't place down a water pot because, again, our creator mode's busted. So run into Impact Get Water and come back when you're ready.
But I will be coming back as a spectator, so... Yep, yep. I must admit, picking on Verse is, like, the highlight of tonight. Oh yeah, it's just the highlight of every night for me. I get to harass him all the time. We want daytime or... Um, let's go ahead and stay with what we've got now, because I don't think we're the only people on the server. Yeah, no, there's other people off in the distance. So, to avoid messing with them too much, and since Dynon is Cath anyway, mm -hmm. um, we'll just let it go as it is. <laughs> Although, I think the server will be restarting soon as well. Last I remember seeing it said 20 minutes, 29 minutes. I don't know when it was though. Okay, uh -oh. we'll, we'll, we'll fix that later. <laughs> Alright. Say 20 minutes from now is 5.40. Alright, we'll set an auto restart when that, when we need to do that. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, anybody who was on the sidelines last time who wants to participate, um, you guys, you get to auto-participate this time. If you want to, anyway. So, you guys, those who want to participate, stand near the bull bars. If you are the hunting party, stand near the bull bars. Alright, so we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all right, ten. Those that just hunted, if there is room in the hunting party, you can participate. If not, you are now swapping out. Yep, you are now swapping out, and those who are on the sidelines, you are responsible for watching your group members' hunting party's health. If you see someone who gets low enough that they need to pull out, tell them to pull out. Tell them you are at 30%. Disengage. Alright, so over here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, no, wait. Hold on, let me double count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 with blue cryptid. Alright, so, Iggy is your target. Engage at will. I'm trying to body block so you guys don't get wrapped into it. Seems to have moved far enough away.
Good job, Ray. Good job to all these people who disengaged. You guys did good. All right. Good job, guys. See, it helps a lot when you have the people in the background that are keeping an eye on health. Sorry about that. You guys all did really good. Alrighty. So, does anybody have any questions about... Excuse you. Alright. So. <laughs> so, anybody got any questions about um, how group members can assist in combat without being the hunting party or anything related to this. No vocal abilities. So, yes and no, depending on the vocal ability. So, vocal abilities start combat, as previously stated, but it's only regenerative calls that are limited. So, a heal call, or a stamina regen call, or a bleed coagulation call. These are examples of regenerative calls. Something that refills a stat that you naturally lost during combat. Those are limited. Something which gives a temporary armor buff, or a temporary um, damage buff. Buffs like that, for example, are not limited. So... Limited is currently in combat. We have a... It's kind of like an honor rule of using only one heal call in combat, I believe. Vert, correct me if I'm incorrect. But I believe what? as of right now... Go ahead. What was that? Sorry, I, I was reading a report. Um, so, we currently have it to one heal call in combat, yes? Yes. Yes, alright. So... You should only use one regenerative call in combat. If you are needing to use multiple regenerative calls in order to kill something, that's a sign that whatever you've chosen as a hunting target is outside of your league. Because you're essentially needing... Oh, I just crashed. Anyway, you're essentially needing um, extra people that you don't have in order to effectively drop that body. Because if you think about it in the sense of a heal call gives you a second health bar, right? You've got your first health bar, and then you've got um, the second health bar, which is after the heal call. So essentially that's two people for every one hunting party, every hun hunter in the hunting party. So if you're having to use a heal call, then that means that you are essentially requiring a hunting party that is twice the size of what you have in order to kill that target. trying to rejoin the server because I crashed. This poor little laptop is fighting for its life right now. Alright, so 
Regenerative calls, anything that refills a stat, only use it once. A buff call, which um, only temporarily improves a stat, is free reign. Reign? Free gain, free reign. Alright. Coming back in. Alright, I return. Even if you're the prey? Yes. Essentially, yes, dragon. If you are the prey item, and your um, hunters have put in all that work to drop you, and you use a heal call, now they have to essentially kill a second lamb. That's like a second amount of health. Like a whole second health bar that they have to go through. You might as well just be a new lamb, you know? They shouldn't have to try to kill four or five quote-unquote lambs in order to drop you, you know? It's not fair to the hunting party because they might be starving by the time they do that. So UT hunting parties need to um, kind of really keep track of how they're going to fight. Because if they go up against things that tend to do a lot of bleed, then they need to be able to use their bleed coag call or, you know, the heal call, but they can only use one of them. Yes, dragon. One for the entire interaction. It's a bit harsh, but think about it this way. Your, your target does not have that benefit. They don't have the ability to just heal back up over the course of 5-10 minutes. Minutes. 5-10 seconds. To essentially have a free revive, in a way. So... Are non-participant pack members allowed to have passive perks on that buff the others? So, if you're on the sidelines, you should not activate any abilities to buff your hunting party. If you have a passive buff that does not need to be activated, that's just constantly going, then that's fine. You shouldn't be doing any extra things to kind of boost the, the, uh, the hunting party. Mm-hmm. So anything that they didn't already start with, they should not have. So if they go in with three people, they should essentially come out with three or less people. And they, any abilities that those three hunters have is the ones that they're limited to, you know? So if they don't have a heal call and somebody outside of the hunting party has a heal call, the hunting party doesn't have that heal call, you know? Also welcome, MD. We are about to start transferring into the herbivore side. That's MD. He just, he joined late. Alright, so, you guys, swap to an herbivore of your choosing. I would prefer hadrosaurs, because they're just easier to manage. Hadrosaurs are things like Para, Bars, Iggy, Lambio. So the ones that don't have horns on their faces. Anno is not a Hadrosaur, nor is it a Ceratops gene. It's sort of its own thing. I've got DPS handled. Alright, thank you. So come in as um, Lambio, Iggy, Bars, Para. One of those. We're going to teach you guys how to do um, effective herd defense as well as um, effective limitations to your defensive, your defensive party. We're going to teach you how to wall up and make defensive maneuvers. 
Try not to spam a call, please. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'll do I'll do grows and marks. Um, if you want to just handle the teleports. Yep, all good. All right, growth and marks, growth and marks. I mean, there was nothing saying that you couldn't bring a new Hadrosaur in. Like, if you wanted a, a second Bars, you could have brought in a second Bars. Yep. No, we can't do... We, you can't bring any, bring any Apexes. I gotcha. Yes, you you're allowed to use them. You are allowed to keep up to two dinosaurs from the event that are staff grown as a sort of reward for attending. Naturally, again, apexes do not apply there. Alrighty, so once you guys are all settled, All right. Once you guys are all settled, you're going to join the group that is species specific. Welcome back, Wooga. Um, a hadrosaur. Swap to a hadrosaur if you're choosing. You have the ability to run that command, MD. I have a ping. Cool. Oh, Not bad. Update ping. I'm all good. All good. good. I was just making sure. Yeah. Go ahead and join um, a species-specific group. You're all going to count as part of the same herd, but this is just for the sake of making it easier to tell. Because it's going to be relevant. It's going to be relevant to what we do next. None other than myself.
I got you, Cryptid. So, before we begin, I want everybody to look over your profiles real quick and look at defensive behavior. Figure out who is allowed to defend who. Alright, bye Pedro. You don't have to be wide, Wooga. Dimorphism isn't something that's enforced. It's just, you know, you'll be treated as what you look like. So, you can have a regular crest and still be male. Or still look male. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so, I'm actually going to swap to something a little bit more dangerous. Alright, we're going to go over appropriate aggression levels. And I'm using an apex for this because I want you guys to be able to recognize behaviors in apexes. Because even if you're not apex approved, you're still going to be on crossing paths with apexes on occasion. You need to be able to recognize certain calls that they do, certain abilities that they have, things of that nature. Alrighty, so, everybody's grouped up from the looks of it. This sniffle appears to be in the wrong group. Alrighty, so, is everybody ready? Does anybody need any more growths or anything? Oh, that we're not, we're not starting yet, Paris. We're not starting yet. Alright. Is everybody ready to go? No more growths or anything needed? I assume that's a yes. Alright, so... Um... You can be. The rut and um, regular thing isn't really something that's enforced currently, because it's an older profile. So you can use rut grouping or regular grouping, it is up to you guys. Alright, so, before we begin with any sort of combat sort of thing, I want to go over a common occurrence that, um, I think you are, yeah, a common occurrence that we see that um, we're going to be looking towards um, kind of ending. Also, I think we're twins, Virk. Yep. We actually are, aren't we? <laughs> this is a nested Rex too, so that's kind of that's 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 awesome, actually. I was gonna okay. say this is this is my actual Rex as well. So. <laughs> well, all right. So. So something that we see that hop happens a lot. I think you're you're fine, Wooga. What happens a lot in herds is a lot of people unintentionally care bear because of the the unlimited grouping mechanic. Because our server is different from other servers where we allow herbivores of mixed species to group up. So oftentimes that kind of unintentionally kind of inclines people towards care bearing. Which we see it a lot often is um, having a bias towards group members that are not of your species during situations like where there's meat shielding going on. So meat shielding is allowed. But, if you are being meat shielded by 
something that is not the same species as you. For example, if there's a para and a taco is using them as a meat shield while being chased by a dilo, the para is going to be angry at the dilo for being in their space, and they're going to be angry at the taco for bringing the dilo to them. You should never be passively accepting of a different species bringing a threat to you. Also, bye, Sharky. Thank you for attending. All right. Does anybody have any questions on that front before we begin? I see some no shakes. Nope's in chat. All right, I'm going to give it a couple seconds in case anybody's typing. And then after that, we're going to have you guys. You're all going to group up. Not in-game group, but like you're going to walk together. On lamb, it has armored tail. What's the difference? Armored tail, um, it just means that people who bite your tail take reflect damage. So, herbivores, you're going to be walking together, but you're going to stay in your individual groups. Um... When you guys see a threat appear, when you guys see a threat appear, you're going to separate into your species-specific groups and only defend those in your species-specific group. So I see Crystal is grouped with an Iggy over there. The Lamb and Iggy are not going to defend each other. When threat comes, when it comes to the two of you, unless Profile says otherwise, it is everybody fends for themselves. I believe Lamb and Iggy have something together. I believe there's a symbiote thing. Yes, it does, Crystal. Reflect damage is, say, if I were to do 60 damage to you, I would take 30 damage back when I bite you every time. And it's not an exact number, but it's just an example. Mm -hmm. Alright, so, herbivores start walking. The Rexes are going to catch up here shortly. When you see the threat... I want to see what you guys believe is a reasonable threat response. Also, Crystal and Flame, check profile real quick and see if you guys are allowed to protect each other. If you are allowed to protect each other, then sure. But if it doesn't say anything about protecting each other, then make sure that you don't. Yeah. Alright, so in that case you warn then run, so it is an everybody for themselves thing. So something to keep in mind. I hear a four call. We've been seen. So, appropriate threat level response. There's two Rexes. Right now, they're just walking by. They've not shown any interest in the herd yet. So there's no need to spiral into a panic. For all you know, we're just passing by. Only spiral into a panic. Um, ideally, never. Don't really spiral into a panic if you can, if you can help it. But if, as of right now, for all you know, we could just be going to the water. Don't panic, or don't react inherently aggressively until you see us paying a little too much attention to the herd. Now, as of right now, you guys know that we are going to go for you eventually. But make sure not to let that affect your behavior in-game. Because, as of right now, you guys... Your animals don't know if these two Rexes are actually hungry enough to hunt you or not. So be aware, but don't panic. Alright. 
when the attack happens, again, you guys are all going to split up and you're only going to defend your own group and those you are allowed to defend. It was very easy to separate one of his. I think this one might have panic charged in another direction. Alright, and so we've forfeited. We are not safe from you until we escape line of sight. Alright, so now Wooga, if they're not interested in pursuing, we'll run to catch back up with the herd. And now we are <laughs> on a 15 minute timer with the herd. We cannot follow you guys. And we cannot interact with you guys. If we happen to cross paths naturally, that's fine, so long as we do not pursue you guys for the next 15 minutes. Naturally, because this is class, we're going to modify things. But what happens in a class would not normally happen outside of the class. So we're going to sit, and we're going to heal. 
And then Wooga's para is gonna limp slowly back to the herd. <laughs> Alright. I am curious about what happened there, because it looked like the one para panicked. And, um... Kind of charged away from the group, instead of further into the group. Is that what happened, Wooga, or...? And as far as Ray, even if you're a pursuer or a tracker tag, once you forfeit, it's over. There's no more pursuit or, tra or a tracker. Sounds good, Wooga. Yeah, so endurance tracker is before forfeit. We're going to go over how that affects here shortly. Let's see here. Set HDR health. Okay. Set HR woo health. Okay. Set HR Restorix health. Okay. No worries. All right. So we're all healed, and we're gonna acknowledge. Fifteen minutes has, has passed. So what we're gonna do is in another situation bear in mind no one is allowed to sit so long as you can be seen so the rexes are going to try and walk somebody down the way that endurance tracker differs from others is that endurance tracker has a sort of alternative rule to the five minute bite timer rule for endurance for endurance trackers it is line of sight. So as long as we can see you, that still counts. The only way that you can fully escape endurance tracker is if you can break line of sight for five minutes, or if you can force them to forfeit. If you can force them to forfeit, then you're safe. Oh, sorry about me. We got somebody sitting. So we're gonna walk and walk. Yeah, we're not gonna go for them. We're gonna walk and walk and walk until either A, somebody gives up and turns to face us, or somebody's just too tired to walk anymore. So we're going to try and instill a little bit of panic. We're going to see if we can make the herd kind of freak out a little bit. Somebody fell behind.
And now I forfeit. And we're not safe from the bars right now. Remember, at some point, you do have to let him go, though. <clears throat> Let's see here. Unless the profile typically says that you chase them down to death, you do have to let them go at some point. Because the aggression level shown to those um, who forfeit, it does vary by profile. Another thing to keep in mind, something that you guys might have seen during that pursuit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you are allowed to body block people during combat, so long as you do not mesh to achieve that body block. So, you're allowed to run and put yourself in front of another member, but you're not allowed to force yourself into their model to make them back up, to keep them there. If they're ahead of you and you can't get in front of them, then don't keep trying to body block them, you know? It's just an example, not necessarily saying what happened. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying you did or you didn't, Ray. I'm just making an example. Um, after I saw something that made me think of it, so there, there's another rule about that. I uh, will see if I can find it real quick so I can read that to you guys. Um, but basically, yeah. Uh, so long as you are not meshing to achieve body blocking or anything like that. So you're not forcing yourself into or through the model of another, then you're fine. Yeah. As long as you correct it quickly and try to avoid doing it again, then it's all right. All right. On request, I cannot fulfill that as of right now. You did good. Yeah, you guys did good. You got two Rexes to forfeit. I really want to do a full Giga group versus Argent thing here. So like a Giga mob? That could probably be arranged. We'll do that after we cover everything for the class. All right. So while we're healed up, we're going to come over. And we're going to give you guys some guidance tips. Don't freak out about the Rexes this time. The Rexes are not here. They are a lie. Hi, Sav. That would be fun, but would not Apex people be allowed to join in as long as they delete them after? Yeah, so we'll let you guys join in, but if you're on an Apex, you have to let a staff member shrink you before you log off. If you need to log off and you're on an Apex, tell a staff member to shrink you to Hatchling before you log. Because if we slay you, all it does is bring you back like a couple, couple bars into a stage. You don't really lo you don't really lose a lot. Are we getting kicks kicked when we try to join as Apex? So, um, that happens when there's a staff member watching the um, the list, like the server logs, and that's for people who join as an Apex without being given permission. It's not like an auto kick thing. All right, so we're gonna show you guys a little tip and trick for. Um, Oh, fun. But yeah, so you guys, we're going to show you a um, how to do a barricade wall, like a defensive wall. How to do it appropriately. So y'all come and line up. We're going to pretend Sav. Sav is our baby herbivore. You guys are defending. Defend the chicken. All right. 
So the bars would not join in the defensive wall because they are a different species. Each group has their own defensive structure. So, real quick, everybody pause. So this, these paras have a very messy wall right now. I could very easily get around that. So what you want to do is you want to, yep, there you go, wiggle in. And you want to have enough space between you that you're not necessarily going to clip into each other. All right, let's see. I'm just looking. All right, so. All right, so we've got a decent amount of tail clipping, but not too much. That's what you want to aim for. You want to make sure you don't have too much clipping right in the middle there. So that's why you have enough space between you. Also, Another thing to keep in mind, you don't have to have a full circle, you only need to block the sides that, the tar that your enemies are on. So, for example, only pay attention to Verk right now. Pretend that I'm not here, because I'm, I'm watching and I'm giving guidance. So you guys, you want to circle around to block Verk. Because he's the one who's looking to get in there, get into your chicken. Pretend, protect the chicken nugget. Mm -hmm. And now the barricade needs to move to block the, the carnivore, but but you need to make sure. Hold on. Stop, stop calling. We gotta make sure everybody can hear. When I put calm in chat, it means, it means stop calling. Um, so, you guys need to have your wall spread out enough that Vert can't do a fake out, try to run one direction, and then juke the other way to get around you guys. So make sure you're spread out enough that you're not clipping into each other, and you can still body block if he tries to do a fake out to get around you. There you go, there you go. Like that. Alright, I'm gonna move behind you guys again. Don't acknowledge me. I'm not here, like, as a hunter. Sounds like we got people bumping each other. Alright, Crypt is arriving late. See if you can get into the- into the barrier wall. Alright. All right, Perez, you've successfully fended him off. He's no longer interested in you because you proved to be too much of a hassle to get around. All right. So Crystal and Flames, you guys would move away from the bars and try to defend yourselves by escaping the wrecks. So you're gonna either run or you're gonna find a defensive position. And the, the para herd is going to move far enough away that they're not going to get caught up in the middle of it. Alright, where's our golden chicken? Sav, I need you. Golden chicken. Alright, you are the bars, baby. Go hide between the bars. Alright, Verk, you're trying to get the bars, baby. The golden chicken. The KFC. I don't know if he has that ability equipped. Oh, chicken got smacked, but is not dead.
Alright. So a good thing to keep in mind when it comes to hadrosaurs and defensive positions, when you're doing circles up like that, you want to make sure the halfway point in your tail, that is when clipping becomes a no-no. You can't have more than half of your tail kind of like intertwined with the others because then that becomes a little bit too much, a little too close to the center mass. So like you can have this the far end of your tail, that that last half of your tail, that can be meshed between because that's kind of hard to take into account for. All right, I think the bars baby would be dead at this point, but Alrighty. We're going to disengage. You guys did good. Does anybody have any questions on her defensive um, kind of like positions and stuff like that? <clears throat> Thank you, Vert. Thank you, Sap, for being the sacrificial golden KFC. It is, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bar uh, bars are... That's why bars are high tiers instead of apexes as well, because they're really hard to maneuver. It's very easy to kind of cheese the bars, which is why we have them as high tiers. Where bush? Uh, bush this way. It is, Wuga. That's that's my uh, thing that I use as a solo bars. I've fought off multiple pairs of Rexes. I'm totally part of this herd. This is normal. Alright, let's see, where the herd is- uh, the bush is at. Yep, there's one. Alright, should be refreshed. There you go. Alrighty, do we want to try having half of you become a carnivore pack? See if you guys can get the target. Alright. Those of you who want to swap to a carnivore pack, come over next to the Rexes, and you guys need to discuss and agree on what kind of carnivore you're going to swap to. The rest of you are going to stay here as herbivores. And you're going to be the herd. Alright, so once you guys discuss and agree. Alright, so looks like we got five carnies then. Potentially six. Yeah, looks like six carnies. Alright, once you guys have chosen and agreed, you're gonna swap to that, we're gonna bring you back. DASP is fun, but it's a challenge, Crystal, because their attacks are changed together and have a cooldown. So you have to be able to work with um, cooldowns. But it's very fun. Don't 
way, Crystal. You can do it. I believe in you. Besides, this is what this is what this is here for. It's just for uh, my advice, snacks, and pocket change. Absolutely, we're here for practice, learning. Marks. Ooh, go. Ooh. It doesn't. There you go. It's an HTR. The blue cryptid growth one. Oh, you got it. All right, I I grew cryptid, but I'll let you have the rest of it. All right, so... Verk, would you like to join the carnivores, or are you gonna join me on baby herbivore? I'll join you on the herbivores. All right, we are gonna be the hunting targets. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna port this guy away to... Great. Actually, no, I'm gonna move him. Put him in salt as well. I'm going back to my, uh, my habitat. I need to move my Rex anyways. Territory's not good, so I'm gonna just put him at the place I usually put people. Why do I hear a ramp? Uh, there, there's a ramp in... PP. Pause. Yeah, I've teleported them into the playable area, and then they came back here. Put them on the other side of the playable area. Like, the far end. If they come back, um, we'll scold them. Unless they're- are they in the chat, like, participating in the event? I don't think so. Okay, because if they're not, like, participating in the event, they shouldn't be here. Yep. We going I had as... a blue screen of death, I'm coming back. We going as power Anyways. babies, yeah? Yeah. I got a strength mine, but yeah. Go somewhere in the juvenile to adolescent range. Alright, so, because it's about to become relevant, I'm gonna go over a different part. Alright, seems like they're hopefully gonna go back. Yes, they can. So, something to keep in mind. With um, species whose males do not defend the babies, only the females should be defending the babies should a defensive wall or barrier be broken. The main thing for that is if you have, um, if you have a defensive barrier and the females are in the middle with the babies, the males are defending the females. 
if the females are no longer in the middle, then the males no longer care about the defensive wall. Unless the profile states that the male directly cares for their offspring, the male does not care if the baby is being targeted. So I want everybody in para group real quick to go and check out profile real quick. Make sure. I believe that is the case. So, if the defensive barrier gets broken and the babies are exposed to danger, the males are only going to defend their females and or the female that they're currently paired with. Alright, Dragon, thank you very much. Males will only protect his current mated females. Females will not protect one another. Foals will only be protected by their parents. However, males may try to may try to protect females that run to him if he does not already have three females to protect. So, it says um, that foals will be protected by their parents. So that means those that are not related to me should not be trying to defend me. All right, so Sav's gonna be my my mother. Who's gonna be my father here? So, I'm gonna take it as these two are my parents, Dragon and Sav. That means Dragon is gonna be the male that defends Sav. Or MD. You could do either way. So, Dragon defends Sav along with any other females that run to him. MD defends um, Virk's mother, Ruga. As well as any females that run to him. So, the DASPs, your target is the babies. All right, para herd, start moving out, and whenever the DAS pride is ready, they will catch up. Yep, got you. Males are not required to have bone break. It's part of that's part of dimorphism, which is not um, which is not enforced. No crystal. Anybody can have bone break. Per profile, normally it's males that have bone break, but anybody can actually have bone break because we do not enforce dimorphism, and that's part of dimorphism. Yeah, so that's more profile flavoring than anything. It's not something that's enforced. I mean, if you want to, you can also just talk in group chat because we can't see the group chat. Sniffle. So, again, those who are not participating in the herd should not interfere with the herd in any way, which would draw attention to yourselves over that of the hunting party. Because if you're displaying an aggressive calling and stuff like that, then it, um, the person who's being hunted may be confused as to whether or not you are participating. Yeah. Um, more so, Dragon, you would mostly defend the females. So when it says parents, um, hold on, Ray. Pretty much. You, you defend the female, 
and then the female defends me. Your priority is the female, and if you happen to defend me by proxy, that's okay. When it says parents, it basically implies that only the person who is actively looking after the young at the time. So, only the mother, only the adopted mother, etc, etc. Adopted father by proxy defense, things of that nature. So somebody who is not an acting parent of that juvenile should not be looking to defend that juvenile. And would be irritated with that juvenile for um, attempting to... You guys can use your group chat, by the way, Ray. So that way we can't see what's coming. But yeah, um... What was I saying? All good, all good. If you are not related to the young, you would be irritated by that baby coming to you and bringing danger to you. Unless you are an active protecting parent. An important thing here with the herd is communication. Make sure... Okay. Make sure that we're not spiraling into a panic of calls. Because you guys can't communicate clearly if something is about to happen and you're all screaming, you know? So if you see something, give a couple of alert calls and once the entire herd knows that they're there, then... Make sure you're not spiraling into that panic of calls, which is going to impede communication. So, a couple calls here and there. But, um... Alright, so I'm below half at this point. My mother would consider me non-viable at this point. So at this point, like, if I get got, that sucks. Um, so Dragon is only uh, concerned with defending his female at this point. I am kind of just... here now. And if I die, I die. There you go. Alright, so now the herd moves away from the body. And the female can grieve, but make sure you grieve from a distance, so that way the, the group is not denied that body. Alrighty. GG's indeed. Does anybody have any feedback, any thoughts, or things that occurred to them during that hunt? Is victory calling realistic because it attracts other predators who want to steal the kill? 
So, it depends on the context. Victory calling itself, for the sense of celebrating a victory, would not be realistic. But broadcasting to say, this is my, my home, this is my food, I am here. Realistically, yes, you could do that. You could also call your clan or your pride with it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it depends something. on the intent behind the broadcast. <clears throat> Mother, I returned from the grave. But the way the DAS started calling after the body when the parents were moving my account as unrealistic. I did not hear it, so I will let Verk give feedback on that front. Uh, I didn't hear it either. <laughs> I died, so... Mm -hmm. So, I would say it would come down to how quickly they broadcast it after you dropped. If they broadcast it immediately, that sounds like victory calling. I've got a question for males who don't have anyone they need, want to protect and herd. What does he do when the rest of the herd is in the circle? Does he just separate or keep defending himself? So you would defend yourself in the vicinity of the circle along with any females who run to you for protection. So you are kind of just there, and you defend yourself, but any females that go to you specifically for protection, you can you can also defend. I heard the vic uh, I heard the calling, and it was probably, I want to say, two to five seconds after the body went down. I would say in this sense, it doesn't, it's not too particularly important because we're doing combat practice, it's not necessarily meant to be 100% accurate to how you would see in the uh i'm just letting you know the time, yeah mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. so i would say if you get a body down wait a few minutes before calling so that way the person doesn't feel like they're being victory called over as of right now we haven't had many issues with people being upset by victory calling so we don't currently have a rule against it but if we do start to see a lot of issues popping up about it a rule will likely be made in response to that issue. No, it's okay, Ray. A lot of larger servers have that issue because um, you get, when your server gets pretty big, you get people who are there for realism, and then you also get people who are there for structured PvP. There's a lot of people that don't enjoy the wanton, like, deathmatchy of, um, semi-realisms or um, regular servers, deathmatches, stuff like that. They don't really like that kind of free-for-all combat. They prefer structured PvP. And so they'll go to realism servers for that structured PvP. And so that's how come you sometimes get those massive groups of, um, like, mid-tiers who only ever go after, like, apexes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have our C1 rule. It's kind of there not only to encourage value for life, but also to kind of deter people who are here specifically for structured PvP. So that's how you end up in situations like that, where you get people who will victory call and um, go after unrealistic targets and things like that. Um, if you need water, go ahead and pop into... Um, go in, into Crater, because that's the closest. I know people normally want to call when a body drops, but I didn't realize it can hurt feelings. Sometimes it does. When you get a person who's like amped up and they're really stressed, and then they lose a character that they're invested in, sometimes that victory call can kind of feel um, antagonistic in a way. Like, haha, I win. And that's normally not the intention behind the victory call. The victory call is normally in celebration of a successful hunt. It doesn't normally mean antagonism. It's just that that's sometimes how the person who has just lost character, that's how they can interpret it sometimes. Would a two call also be disrespectful? I don't think it would be. 
for me, normally, if I were to two call over somebody's body, it would be kind of like a, you did good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I do anyway. So, like, if you see me two call over body, I'm like, you did good. Thank you. You did good. Sort of thing. Return my dinosaur back to their actual size. There we go. Alrighty, let me look at my little document. We'll see what else I had planned to, to go over. So, since we've done herbivore and carnivore, we're now going to look at different tags on profiles. You guys can list off a tag that you want to discuss and see how it works. And we'll go over that. Currently, bodyguard is not an official tag. It's not been added to our... Um, what is it, our behavioral guide, but we'll go over it anyway real quick. So bodyguard is intended to be a tag for dinosaurs that have um, strong parental instincts. So for example, Allosaurus. Allosaurus is tagged with strong parental instincts. And so, well, it's not been added yet, but in the future, um, my subject will be recorded. Yes, um, Versatorix is recording. Um, so... Those with bodyguard tag in the future, whenever a bodyguard tag is officially added, will be able to have, I believe it's up to 30 seconds? 30 seconds after the body drops to defend the body and kind of grieve, and then after that, they will have to leave the body. Any other tags you guys want to discuss? We can also take like a five minute break if anybody needs to use the bathroom or get some food, stuff like that. Because this has been a pretty long class by now. Alright, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a five minute break. Everybody's going to settle, get, um, get your dinosaur food and watered, and then go take care of your own personal needs. If you got dogs that need to go outside, if you got to use the bathroom yourself, stuff like that. 